imagine you are on deck of a pretty 25 meter white wooden boat in the Flores Sea of Indonesia. Prepared to make a four night boat trip to dive, relax and explore several idyllic islands. You are enjoying the company of the 20 other tourists on board and are excited about the journey ahead. And then, during the second night, in the midst of darkness, you get alarmed by the crew because the boat is making water. And it doesn't take long until a big wave comes in and you are smashed into a black ocean. I experienced this in 2014 and I would like to share my story. The boat trip was a perfect way to conclude my solo three-month backpack time in Indonesia. After a first great day of chatting with the others on board, snorkeling and sunbathing, it was time for a 16 hours overnight journey to Komodo. The water grew rougher and rougher, with the white wooden boat bouncing on the waves. I felt really sick and couldn't stop throwing up. In the dark night, the boat kept rolling from side to side, which made me feel very anxious. I put my life jacket on, just in case. Everybody awake, haul in boat, very dangerous. Thoughts kept spinning to my mind. What happened? What can we do to fix this? Did they alarm people on land? What do I have to take with me? My questions were answered soon. The crew couldn't make contact with anyone. There was no equipment for this. And all passenger phones were out of service. I took my passport for identification of my body when I would die. I also took the memory card for my photo camera, just in case I would survive. I also drank a whole bottle of water to be hydrated for a while. We all had different emotions. People got anxious, angry, petrified. I blocked my emotions and switched on my survival mode. I applied what I learned during my medical studies to stay calm and focused on what's important in that moment. The water was pouring in quickly, and I realized that this was serious. And suddenly, an enormous wave was coming in. A moment of panic, and a moment that I was going to drown. All I could feel and see was black water. Panicking, I fought for air. But then, I felt a pair of arms grabbing me and pulling me out. I found myself in a tiny lifeboat. I'm alive. We had to wait for the rest of the night with half of the people on the roof of the sinking boat. Six people crowded in the little lifeboat and the rest swimming in the black ocean. We barely spoke to each other. The temperature dropped, and the wind and the waves made me feel very cold. With my background as a medical student, I was very worried about my body temperature and the risk of hypothermia. All I was wearing was a t-shirt and underwear I was sleeping in. I was also worried about dehydration and losing energy without eating. At 6 a.m. in the morning, the sun began to rise, although surrounded by a powerful ocean, a mountain-shaped island became visible in the distance. Where we just had one option during the night, waiting at the boat, another option occurred at this moment, swimming for shore. As soon as I saw that island, I suggested to swim, but I couldn't convince the others. And people warned me off. The sea is strong and has changeable currents. We need the lifeboat 
to stay afloat. People who stay at the wreck are often the ones who survive. And we have to stay in one big group. I understood what they said. However, a second night in sea, losing more energy and waiting for nothing is not what I want either. And I couldn't think about anything else than that island. We started arguing, but nothing happened in the next hour. It frustrated me. I'd rather die fighting for my life than die not even trying. In a split second, I took my decision. I was going to swim. And four others came with me. We started swimming on our back, arms folded across our life jackets and making powerful leg strokes. Meter-high waves crossed over our heads, causing us to lose sight of each other. With the, si with the survival whistles attached to our life jackets, we kept back together. As soon as I had left, I felt better. I was still sure about the fact that I was going to die. However, I was fighting for my life. And I followed my own instinct instead of doing what the other people wanted. Now I was with people who had the same mindset. We got more motivated. Because Gaylene, a lady from New Zealand, and I swam faster, we became separated. She was a strong, fit, and adventurous woman. I trusted her, and I wanted to stay with her. Focus and swim until you can't swim anymore. When my thoughts drifted away to the idea that my parents would get news, that their daughter wouldn't come back, I felt an enormous pain. But as soon as these thoughts popped up, I blocked them. Swim, swim, swim. About five hours into the swim, we suddenly realized that we could see individual trees on the hillside of the island. We are getting somewhere. We also saw thin lava streams reaching down the sea. There's an erupting volcano. And then we were about 500 meters from shore. There was, I could smell the island, but there was still a huge offshore riptide we had to get through. We rolled over from our back and started swimming with a powerful crawl against the waves. We fought hard, a few meters forwards and a few meters backwards. But we broke through the current and came into calmer waters. And then, my feet touched the beach. I was so relieved and in high spirit, I survived this powerful, enormous, and unpredictable ocean. I'm out of the water. It didn't take long until Galen brought me down to Earth. The swim is just step one. We are on a volcanic island with no food, no shelter, no water. We took off our wet clothes to dry in the last rays of the sunset. Naked, on a deserted beach. I was walking on rocks and through bushes to find water. We couldn't find anything. And so, before we found a sheltered place to sleep, we drank our own urine. I laid down and looked at the amazing carpet of stars. As a city girl, this place felt so unreal. But I felt safe in the arms of Galen, and I fell asleep. We woke up by sunrise, and I felt horribly sunburned. I had blisters all over my face. It could take days before rescue would come, since nobody was looking for us. We discussed what we had to do, and agreed that water was high priority. 
Also, with objects that had washed in with the tide, we made visors to protect our faces. And then, in the early morning, we spotted a boat and started waving with our life jackets on a long stick. Is this our rescue? But the boat passed away and wasn't visible anymore. It took a few more hours before the, the same boat reappeared and was motoring towards us. I couldn't believe that rescue was coming. But I realized that my life continued. Later that day, about 40 hours after the sinking, the lifeboat with the others was spotted in sea, drifted away from shore. Everyone survived, apart from two Spanish passengers who swam for the island as well. They were never found. Where two of the pa passengers passed away, I survived to tell the story, and this changed my life. I experienced the power of the human body and our capability. And therefore, I wanted to set a challenging goal for myself. To test my limits and to see what's possible to achieve. I wanted to race an Ironman. An extreme triathlon race consisting of a 3.8 kilometer swim, a 180 kilometer ride on a bike, and a full marathon 42 kilometer running. Last year, I was on the start, and I was excited and ready to race. And whilst I enjoyed it, I surprised myself and others with the performance I showed. Where I am a doctor, and I want to develop myself as a great surgeon for the world. After this race, I, I decided to step into the total unknown. As of last year, I make a living as a professional triathlete. And even though I don't know my potential, I will only get one chance for it, and I will give it a shot. And this is how I try every time to test and improve my limits so I can become the best that I can be. And I hope that I can inspire you to do as well, so you can achieve where you are capable of. And I hope that with my, with my story, another shipwreck is not needed to accomplish your goals. Thank you.